I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anirudh Joshi from ICCI Securities. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thanks, Dizan. On behalf of ICICI Securities, we welcome you all to Q1 FY22 Results Conference Call of Tata Coffee Limited. We have with us today Senior Management represented by Mr. Chako Thomas, Managing Director and CEO, and Mr. K. Venkat Ramanan, Executive Director Finance and CFO. Now I hand over the call to the management for their initial uh, comments on the quarterly performance, and then we will open the floor for question and answers. Thanks, and over to you, sir. Thanks, Anurud. Uh, good morning. Uh, this is uh, Chako Thomas. Uh, I just wanted to uh, begin the call by underlining the fact that uh, the last couple of months were severely impacted on uh, account of uh, the second wave of COVID that uh, hit us. Uh, and it impacted us as individuals and also, you know, corporates across the country, uh, not just Tata Coffee alone. However, uh, we were also impacted uh, at the company uh, due to shutdowns, uh, where it impacted our operations and uh, unfortunate loss of life that uh, took place in some of our establishments on account of uh, COVID. Uh, however, uh, we worked hard to try and minimize this impact on our employees, the communities that we operated, and uh, the business in general. Uh, despite uh, these challenges, uh, both on the domestic and global front, uh, on a standalone basis, we were able to deliver a good financial performance for the quarter. Uh, on a standalone total income for quarter one, uh, we stood at about 179.5 crores out of the uh, same uh, quarter of uh, 175.6 crores. The uh, standalone uh, PAT was uh, 28.2 crores versus uh, 10 crores of in the same quarter last year, uh, and this uh, being on account of good sales performance across uh, most of the primary divisions. Uh, moving on to the businesses, uh, in the instant coffee uh, uh, arena, both in India and Vietnam, uh, I'm pleased to report that uh, amidst oil, all the turmoil and uncertainties, uh, the instant coffee's performance, both in India and Vietnam, have been pretty remarkable. Despite uh, the restrictions that were imposed on movement uh, of uh, material, man, etc. in the middle of the quarter, uh, we still managed to continue with our operations in both uh, Tani and Tupan. There's a, there's a fairly good sales performance uh, which we managed to clock in quarter one. Uh, also, there was a good focus on cost pullback and that, that continues to give us uh, increased savings uh, in, uh, in, in, in Indian operations also. In Vietnam, uh, Again, very happy to report that we operated our plant at close to 98% capacity uh, with an excellent uh, sales performance, which is uh, largely around, you know, higher volumes across all uh, the products uh, that we have, but uh, especially the premium blends, uh, which, which we, we were able to monetize pretty well during the quarter. Uh, we still face the impact of the pandemic uh, in certain ways because of repeated lockdowns in some of the regions. Uh, and, and at the moment, we have issues that are there in Vietnam. Uh, we also have an inordinate uh, you know, increase in logistics cost. There is a difficulty in uh, the shipping lines. And there is, of course, uh, the increased uh, uh, input prices which which have come come by. But uh, we are very very confident that we would be able to uh, surmount this by our focused uh, new customer acquisition agenda that we still continue to run very very uh, uh, strongly in the in the uh, entire company. This, this is also again through new products that we are uh, uh, coming up with and also a higher percentage of premium blends that we are selling at the, uh, at the moment. In my opinion, this would help us mitigate any of these uh, impacts that I have spoken about in the past. On the, 
on the plantation front, I think uh, the weather so far has been uh, quite conducive for a uh, for a for a decent harvest of crop uh, of both coffee and pepper. Uh, we feel uh, thus far the there have been no major incidents uh, on uh, any of uh, the climate change that uh, has typically impacted us in the past. Uh, with the lockdown now in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, you know, uh, lifted, we are now making sure all efforts are on to ensure workforce is mobilized uh, so that for the upcoming harvest, we are not impacted in any, any manner. Of course, cost optimization is something which we continue to run uh, quite robustly in both our uh, plantations. Uh, T also has had a uh, decent quarter, uh, improved performance over uh, the previous uh, quarter. Uh, and we also intend to invest into and turn these operations uh, sustainably profitable as we go forward. Now, moving on to uh, the consolidated results, the uh, uh, results for quarter one have been slightly lower than the same quarter last year. And this is largely on account of lower volumes and sales uh, from 8 o'clock coffee. What is, uh, what is very important to remember here, uh, in quarter one of financial year 2021, we had seen higher sales primarily due to pantry loading, which was uh, fueled by the COVID-19 uh, uh, issues that had actually come up in the US. This uh, has normalized on the course of this quarter. And on account of this, the consolidated total income for uh, quarter one uh, is 532 crores as compared to 587 crores of the previous uh, year. Uh, to summarize, I think uh, while there are pandemic-induced uh, challenges, and these are going to stay, uh, our efforts are uh, are largely concentrated towards uh, capturing new markets. And there is a, a good show of traction uh, on, on these lines that we are seeing. We are seeing uh, uh, opportunities uh, where uh, there are orders that are coming our, our way, and we want to execute the same in a timely manner. And of course, keep costs uh, uh, pretty uh, steady. And I think. Uh, uh, with all this, we are very clear that we want to. Uh, this will not be in the in the uh, you know uh, we need to keep the safety and well-being of our employees uh, at the forefront as we as we go with this. Uh, thank you, uh, and I just hand over the call to my colleague Venkat, who will take you through the financial performance for the quarter. Thank you, thank you, Jaco. Uh, good morning to all. Uh, all analysts community. So as Chaku has uh, said, the, the standalone results, have, have, the turnover is up uh, due to uh, good performance uh, of the instant coffee business. On the one, the one point to call out is on the on our plantation businesses, coffee business especially, the last quarter again is not a comparable one last year's quarter because of uh, some of these, uh, the flow through of volume from March 2020 to April 20. So to that extent, it really may not be comparable. But having said that, uh, there has been a, a, a good robust performance in the instant coffee division. The other income includes uh, dividends received from 8 o'clock of 18 crores. Uh, so that is one. And, and thirdly, on the employee, um, on the cost side, employee benefit costs are slightly higher. But because last year, the increments, the normal employee increments were not there. This year, that has been uh, kind of uh, given. And, and the finance costs are also lower compared to the uh, previous year's quarter. Tax rate, not much of change. And EPS for standalone is at 1.51 1, 1, 1, 1. compared to 0. 0.56 of the uh, same similar quarter the, the previous previous year. Coming to uh, consolidated, as Chaco has said, uh, the, you know, uh, some of these uh, uh, the peak demand normalizations have happened in 8 o'clock uh, due to pantry filling, which happened the previous uh, the previous year's quarter. So the turnover is, is uh, that, uh, so, so that's the reason for the drop in turnover. Vietnam has had a good quarter. And overall, uh, uh, and overall uh, profit, uh, profit before tax was what for consolidated is at 62 crores, 62.7 compared to 79 of the previous year. Largely, uh, uh, sort of you know attributable to the uh, 
uh, uh, lower performance on the from, from eight o'clock uh, coffee. With that, uh, uh, I sort of hand over to the uh, for Q and A. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remember yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants request that you use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question key assembles. The first question is from the line of Jeet Gala from Centra Advisors LLP. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, basically I want to understand uh, how are we exposed to the uh, coffee commodity prices. I mean, we have plantation, so we'll be selling our, you know, uh, output on the plantation side. So all of that happens on the spot market or we have some, you know, long-term contracts which are already fixed. And with respect to that, I want to understand, so these uh, beans or these plantations also are a raw material cost into your value-added product. So net-net on the company's balance sheet, how are we over exposed to the commodity prices? Yeah, so uh, what I will just summarize, so what is happening on the plantation side coffee is that, see there are two, se two seasons crop which will come, you know, leaving apart these, you know, biological produce valuations, etc. For the 2020-21 crop which is being sold currently, there are, there are contracts in place, they are not long-term contracts, they are seasonal contracts in that sense. Okay, that's how it is. So, and 21-22 crop which is yet to come, okay, which is how, which, where the harvest will, will start from, say, uh, September onwards, September October onwards, mm -hmm. those uh, th those contracts are yet to be you know where that, that will take some time to uh, to get fixed. So that is the way the the you know the the equations will work on the plantation side. Having said that, I we are I will also I want to call out that on pepper we have definitely we have seen a you know a, 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 quite a healthy increase in prices which will hold us in good stead. On the instant coffee side, yes, there is there, there will be impact on account of uh, we we do carry inventories. But having said that, uh, you know, uh, the, the, you know the, the, the kind of pricing will depend on the, you know, contracts already there, but also will factor in the kind of the, the new uh, the, the coffee cost which will come in. So that to that extent, there is, so the, I, to, to say, you know, the different manner, as far as the uh, instant coffee and, uh, business is concerned, there will be uh, some amount of flow through on the, on the increased commodity cost onto the prices because overall, you know, uh, the, uh, overall, that's how the, equa uh, the equations will work. On the eight o'clock side, is there will be uh, they again they carry you know the, all the roasters carry you know 30, 40 weeks of inventory, so there is some amount of protection there. But again, that the commodity cost will, uh, will impact them, and then normally as yes, that will happens in as in FMCG, there will be some you know kind of you know price price throughs which will happen in due course. Okay, okay. Sir, uh, so, sir, uh, the output of the previous season, I mean, is, yes. is any quantity left to be sold on the spot market or, or everything has been contracted? Most of it would have been sold because that's the way it will happen, except there will be always quantities, you know, between on the, on the robust apartment and all that, there will be something. But, uh, you know, but that, that's how the, uh, the, 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 there will be operations. Okay, and so going forward for all the future seasons also, I mean, contracts will be there. I mean, you, you all don't like to, you know, participate in the spot market. Is that true? No, spot will be there, but we also have some of the contracts which are there for the slightly, you know, for the new season as well, which will be there. And also, I think uh, what is important to remember here is uh, uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, premiumized and differentiated our coffee. So there is there is that element which also, uh, you know, comes into play, which is around, uh, you know, single origin and all. So there is, there is, uh, there is a, uh, you know, a, a, a fine line that you need to balance uh, especially when you when you look at spots, right, or a, a long-term uh, kind of a uh, contract. So we do feel uh, with the uh, uh, with the kind of coffee and the kind of crop that we uh, that we hope to have, you know, uh, we would be uh, we would be placed in a good 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 spot at the moment. Okay. And so lastly, on the standalone balance sheet, are we net net buyers of uh, the beans or we are the net seller? I mean, c considering the plantations and the value added on the standalone balance sheet. 
we will be net buyers in a sense because see, we roughly produce around the eight, eight, you know 8000 tons of coffee roughly we buy you know almost double that for the quantity for the instant coffee price Understood. but again the the, the 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 nature of business are different understood understood thank you so much sir thank you thank you the next question is on the line of amit doshi from kpms please go ahead <clears throat> yeah thank you uh, so, sir this uh, eight o'clock uh, brand of coffee is now you know being planned to launch in india or probably already launched in india uh, through tata consumer products so can you broadly tell us what could be uh, the arrangement between the two because brand is being used so would there be some sort of a royalty and uh, what sort of sharing arrangement so broadly if you can throw some light on that So I am unable to comment on that right now, Amit, because it is just coming in. So uh, we'll wait for some time. It's it's already launched, right? In the June month. It's only a o- online, you know. Yeah. It's just you know we're getting in. That's where it is. Hum. Okay, but but what is the plan? Some. I mean, any nothing can be shared. No, nothing can be shared right now. Okay. 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 Acha. Okay. Any. Uh, impact of this third corona wave uh, in vietnam we are seeing in our uh, in our vietnam plant operations whether dispatches or operations production no, that, anything see, so far what is happening is vietnam we are seeing you know more, more increased number of cases there are restrictions you know employees have been asked to stay within the factory and all that but so far there has been no impact on the on the production or the shipments okay both are safe okay fine yeah. and this uh, uh, while of course you answered a bit on the commodity prices earlier but now recently of course both the coffee prices are substantially up because of this expected crop loss and you mentioned initially in your opening remark that there are our plantation operations are uh, uh, like intact there is no sort of impact as such so uh, what can you share some sort of outlook for our coffee uh, uh, plantation business uh, going forward plantation business so we can tell two things one the outlook for the crop is so far good compared to what the norm, the normal monsoons and all whatever we are going for so that means effectively the you know of course coffee goes through the on and off cycles and all that but coffee uh, and pepper the outlook uh, remains uh, quite safe in terms of crop on the prices of course we will wait you know because too early days to come and of course with the with the, with the bullishness in prices it will benefit the plantations Oh, wow. Because this crop loss in Brazil will not be short lived, right? It will be have some sort of a medium. I mean, like you know, yeah, three, four, yeah, correct. Five, but five. we are not getting the full picture yeah. on that. Yeah. You know, slowly things are, you know, I think that there will be little more clarity over uh, next next few weeks or something. So, Amit, uh, it's like this. I mean, uh, it depends on who you actually speak to. There are, uh, you know, vast variances in terms of the. Uh, perceived loss of crop that has happened in Brazil that is actually coming out, right? Uh, uh, when I talk about vast, we are talking about somebody talking from two million right up to ten million bags of uh, coffee. So I think uh, I'm having been in agriculture for a fairly large period of. Uh, uh, I would say that you know to take a uh, estimation just one week, ten days after a uh, you know event. uh i think it's fraught with uh, a, a lot of uncertainty and also i mean uh, while there are some uh, again some uh, there is some talk about another cold uh, cold front uh, building up all this is you know something that we will we will get a clearer picture maybe a month uh, you know 45 days where uh, the actual impact of all this all these events will be clearly clearly visible Uh, also yes uh, you are absolutely right it is something which uh, would not just impact this year's crop but also the coming years crop so that 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 something which you know in a severe uh, uh, incidence of uh, frost and and again i'm clarifying here we have absolutely no idea what the intensity of frost has been uh, you know severe incidence of frost you will even lose uh, many many uh, uh, bushes in the stem so that's that's where it is i think we should wait for at least a month month and a half maybe up to two months to get a much much clearer picture fair enough fair enough fair enough and in our eight o'clock uh, business you know in terms of price hikes etc so how it uh, will happen you know because of this uh, 
let's i mean i understand but generally it how it happens because last year also you know there was a huge competition uh, we have mentioned in past uh, commentaries as well and uh, uh, you know we have done significant marketing expense as well so in terms of now Uh, there will be some sort of a price hikes or you know to improve the margins of 8 o'clock business any anything on that no right now we don't want to comment but it will be uh, you know in line with the what what competition does also they will take into account and uh, the, 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 that's how they will plan sure okay thank you and all the very best thank you bye thank you before we take the next question we would like to remind participants that you may press star and want to ask a question The next question is from the line of Nitin Agrawal from Elite Wealth Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, this is Nitin Agrawal from the Elite Wealth Limited. Thank you for this great opportunity. Uh, sorry, to to uh, Mr. Nitin, no, we are not able to hear you clearly. Uh, right now it's audible. So can you use the handset mode while speaking? Uh, just a second. Yeah, now it's audible. Much yeah. better. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for this opportunity. Yeah, sir. My question is: the Brazil COP has been destroyed, and the uh, it it is ex- expected that the coffee prices will shoot up in the future, and the uh, it will the crop the impact of crop will be global. So, what uh, what would be your view on this? So again, I mean, I think just a while back when I was speaking to Amit, I was just making this point. Uh, there is a there is a uh, there is still. uh lack of clarity in terms of the actual extent of damage um uh, and the kind of uh, reports that are coming out from brazil suggest uh, vast variances in terms of the total quantum of crop that is going to be lost now uh again the point that i was trying to make there is uh you know in in agriculture it would be virtually impossible to be able to take an estimate which is uh you know factually correct within you know a week of an incident actually taking place so uh, my uh, my uh, my my reading into this is that while there has been damage definitely there is no no doubts about it the total quantum of damage and the actual impact that it would have on the future uh, prices of coffee could be better understood uh, maybe a month and a half two months from now when the you know when everything would be very 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 much more clearer uh, and uh, obviously since uh, coffee is a globally uh, traded commodity uh, the the increase or decrease of coffee prices would uh, equally be applicable to uh, tara coffee Uh, right fair enough uh, and uh, uh, my second question would be uh, you uh, would you please can guide me through your top line guidance for q q2 fy22 uh, just you uh, saying outlook for q2 yeah no outlook for q2 we are not able to give in specific numbers but having said that we have said that the profit the coffee and pepper crop uh, you know coffee crop looks uh, you know uh, safe that what uh, you know you know that 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 much we can say and uh, vietnam uh, we hope uh, we have uh, uh, you know oh, order yeah. books of course yeah, order book for the order book is healthy and eight o'clock of course we we'll have to you know depending on the uh, you know uh, Uh, situation in in US in terms of market conditions that that will be so that's a kind of broad uh, indication thank you so much thank you the next question is from the line of samir gupta from iifl please go ahead <coughs> Uh, uh good morning sir and thank you for taking my question uh, just one actually so <clears throat> basically uh, even without the uh, crop loss in brazil there was a decent amount of inflation in uh, both robusta and arabica globally the coffee prices that we are seeing but uh, 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 in, in spite of being you know net buyers of uh, coffee Uh, we we are not seeing any major impact on our margins in fact uh, on a consolidated basis our gross margin is up some 350 basis points so just trying to understand uh, what has led to this uh, increase uh, is it just mix or is it more than that 
No, there are two, uh, two, two or three reasons. One, of course, the the the, the, the mix will change. No, see, we have got the different you know instant coffee products. One is the instant you know, the spray, you know, aglo and freeze. So there, there's a mix always there between ta India and Vietnam. That, that that mix will be there. One, one one factor which will be there. And secondly, of course, we ca we also carry some inventories. No, so that also there will be. And then we contract already pricing. And also the uh, the quality of uh, the. I mean, in, in terms of uh, the uh, uh, the kind of blends that you would be selling, uh, that, that also has an impact uh, on the overall margins. So if there is a larger proportion of uh, premium blends that you would be selling, uh, which is something which I had spoken about, is what we, we are trying to, you know, uh, spend more time on, uh, that would also help the margins uh, expand a bit. Got it, sir. And going forward, let's say when when you exhaust the lower cost inventory, and uh, let's say the prices they stay at where they are. Uh, I'm not even considering the Brazil class crop loss impact. Would it be a fair assumption that margin should uh, technically then start to deteriorate just pricing in the higher coffee prices? No, but typically, you know, what will happen is the you know the buyers will also price in the increases. No, because I, I that's the way the FMCG will operate. There will be some pass through. So there will be some some pass through expected because of these prices. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, the, 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 there will be skewing of margin, which will not be there for long. You know, for for some for some months, okay, till the price the price hike settle down, there will be some impact. But otherwise, margins will normally catch up uh, once the depending on the coffee prices. Uh, but sir, globally, the demand is not going to uh, or expected to increase in a sharp manner, right? In fact, with the COVID pandemic, there is an out of home which has been impacted, yeah. and overall, yeah. the demand probably will be lower. So margins technically should, you know, moderate mm -hmm. in the near term. It's not like a long term thing, but uh, in the near term, at least we should see some pressure logically on the margins, right? So, See, the point is, you are comparing to the previous year. The things have improved. If you really look at it, you know what was there the previous year and now the things have uh, sort of you know the the pandemic is, you know by, by you know they have been controlled. Vaccinations have happened, etc. So while there is no there, there won't be any increasing demand per se. What we are looking probably you know the out of home consumption etc. in the near term will take time to catch up. Got it, sir. That the I'll come back in the case. I have more questions. Okay, thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chetan Thakkar from ASK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Hi. Hi. So I just wanted to get a sense on the profitability for Vietnam operations. We've been successfully uh, utilizing those capacities now. So in the next two to three years, how should we uh, view the profitability of those operations? And are the levers available by moving up on the value-added side to drive those uh, higher? Yes, see, it is uh, it's a, it is profitable, uh, Chetan. The thing is, the overall we have, as we you know, we the previous time, previous quarters also we commented. There are still levers which are available, both on the you know cost side as we you know as the operations stabilize and we are you know trying to learn uh, more about the operations. That will that will be one lever. Secondly, on the mix, you know, there is there is potential to sort of you know look at improvements there. And thirdly, we are also not uh, so far into SKUs and all that. We are only in the bulk, uh, bulk, uh, you know, uh, ma uh, ma uh, sale. So these are uh, broadly uh, three levers. These are the broad three levers which will help us in the future. That's what uh, uh, you know our uh, estimate is. And also, I think uh, this year what we have also been able to prove is that you know uh, the the better uh, the uh, blend mix. Or better, the uh, premium type of coffees that we we produce from there. Uh, they, there is there is a there is a massive uh, runway there available too, and that's something which we have we have uh, very distinctly uh, worked on. Whether it is in new product development, whether it's looking at single origin type of uh, uh, coffees in there, or uh, you know very specific customer uh, uh, focused uh, blends. Which again, uh, there is a massive runway available to us, and it has a, it has a, uh, you know, as the name suggests, it, it has obviously has a premium in terms of not just the quality but also the price that we will be able to. So there is, there is, there is some exciting things that we can we can do. So the assumption that we are running with is fair that while utilization has come, there is still a long way to go in terms of what we can deliver in terms of profitability from that plant. Yes, absolutely, yes. we do feel that. Yeah. Yes. 
Sure, sir. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shanti Patel from Shanti Patel and Associates LLP. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. My yes, question sir. is for ABI and Robbers, what was the price two months before and what is the price today and what, is, what will be the impact on our profitability in future of that price difference? You are asking about the prices of Arabica, is it? Huh, two months before, what was the price prevalent and what is the price today? Of, of uh, Arabica or Robusta, sir? Both, both. Okay. So, uh, so uh, the the prices have obviously moved up. And if you were to uh, look at what has happened after the, uh, uh, you know, the, the news of frost in uh, uh, in in Brazil uh, has been concerned. I think that the prices have moved up substantially uh, over what it was about two weeks back. So no, how much? Can yeah. you quantify a difference? So I'll I'll tell you. So uh, before the uh, news of the frost came in, uh, the prices were ranging anything between 160 to 165 uh, pence per pound for uh, uh, Arabica which has moved uh, right into the 200 zone and it is hanging around that level it comes between 190 to 210 to 215 and keeps coming down based on whatever news is being flashed around similarly uh, just before uh, uh, this news came in robusta was uh, in the region of about 1750 which is uh, dollars per uh, uh, dollars and it is actually now ranging around 1900 odd uh, now 920 depending again on uh, the situation. I hope that uh, clarifies that uh, question. And you know, what will be the impact on our profitability uh, in the se uh, uh, second quarter? See that. See, as I explained them, Mr. Shanti Patel, the point is like yeah. this. See, on the it will not depend on the season. As we said, see, we sell season crops. You no, know, the 2021 crop is almost. You know, we are in the last legs of selling out, the contracting and and selling out. And now what will be what will be price is the new season crop, which is in the process. So it's very difficult to put a, a firm number to that. But if the numbers, you know, uh, depending on the on the contracts what we have entered into and what is remaining to be entered into when the crop is getting harvested, this benefit will be realized. No, but I mean it will be much better as compared to water first. Do you agree? If the prices are holding firm, yes, uh, Mr. Patel. But then the only thing is. There are two factors you please bear in mind. So what happens is the entire season crop, for example, see, is like this. Now we start harvesting somewhere in September, October for Arabica. And, and then it moves up, you know, probably continues up to December. By the time that, uh, you know, the whole uh, thing is gets commercialized, it will be a couple of months down line. Similarly, Robusta will be starting somewhere in November, December, and then goes into, uh, the, you know, next couple of two, three months. So that's the kind of elongated period. You know, it takes some time before the crop gets commercialized. Okay. So the, your, your view on the and, and in between the, the you know we follow something called biological produce valuation where it is based on the Indian coffee board prices. So some, some of it will not be realized. So it, so when we sell, we realize the gain. And till that time, it is more or less valued on the basis of the you know for the coffee board prices, which are not which are not fully because we have to value at net realizable value or the cost whichever is lower in that sense. So. In, in short, the answer will be if the prices hold firm like this, obviously we will stand to benefit. If the prices keep off, you know, keep coming and uh, moving up and, and sort of, you know, moving down, that, that, so that, that, that volatility will have to be factored in. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Harsh Seth from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Harsh, your line is in the talk mode. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes sir. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Good morning, team. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just a couple of questions. So firstly, on our Vietnam operation, so, so can you help me with the revenues that we generated for Q1? See, revenues are in the range of around, uh, around 8 million or... So it, it, it was 8 million in Q4, right? So similar range? Somewhat slightly, maybe higher. Slightly, higher. Yeah. Slightly higher. Slightly higher. And sir, when we speak about uh, improving the mix, uh, so we are 
trying to sell more of uh, free dried coffee, is it right? No, Vietnam is only free dried. It is hundred percent free dried. So okay. in the free dried, there are you know mixed there are various uh, you know combinations possible. Single origin, decaf. We have some of the you know origin blends which we can do. So there are you know typically what we call premium, popular, and all that. So that mix always there is a potential to play you know sort of you know depending on the orders we get we can improve. All right, all right. And sir, so then if we have a good order book and uh, we are running at around 90% utilization levels, do we, do we still don't have any expansion plans uh, in Vietnam specifically? If you can. No, we have to wait, uh, Harsh. I, I understand we are, we are also looking at, you know, we would like to, but then the point is that we have started commercial operations only sometime in 2019. Obviously, we have now just uh, two years into the, into the, and then we have been successfully able to commercialize the operations and we are operating at close to 95% capacity, but we will need to wait and see how the market shapes up. All right, all right. And so, so which which markets are we specifically targeting uh, in instant coffee? If you could, you know, help me out. Uh. So, uh, uh, a large part of Europe and uh, CIS is what we uh, uh, target out from uh, Vietnam. And then, of course, we have a fairly good, uh, uh, you know, uh, presence in the African markets in uh, in from our uh, from our Indian operations. So, uh, of course, there is overlap. Uh, of uh, some of these other customers uh, into Europe and uh, uh, and then uh, for Russia from India also, but uh, largely uh, uh, from Vietnam. Uh, there are there are advantages in terms of uh, trade block advantages etc. So that's something which we we do a ma our maximum quantities go from uh, go into those those two geographies. Uh, 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 all right, all right, got it. And the tax holiday is still. 2024, is that right? Yeah, yeah, correct. Right. Correct. You're right. And, sir, with regards to this MEIS scheme, um, so I think we had accrued around 14, 15 odd crores, but have we received that payment? And uh, secondly, uh, is there any update on this RODTB scheme? Uh, anything well, which would be of our benefit? No, MEIS scheme, we have not accrued 14 crores. We had accrued 8 crores last year. Okay. okay. So that nothing has happened. The portal is not open, but the, what we are understanding is that the portal got open for the previous year. Now we are we have to get for 2021. So that the portal for that year is not open. So that we are expecting some. You know, obviously the previous year 18, 19, 19, 20, and all got opened and claims were lodged. So we are expecting for further uh, update on that from the government. Uh, you know, from the government authorities. On the RODTP scheme, no, so far no indications. So the rates have not been announced. All right. Uh, and sir, just one thing, in instant coffee, if you could, you know, uh, help me out with how the, you know, our, our contracts are structured. You just wanted to understand the pass-through mechanism that uh, we have in place, uh, given the, you know, uh, uh, inflation and in coffee prices, if you could help with that. So these are all, you know, contracts which, are, which don't last, you know, we, we maybe for three to six months kind of uh, time frames, it will last. So, and uh, it all the price, it, it prices in the you know, coffee, you know, uh, existing coffee prices in that sense. That's how it is. Right. And, and we have back-to-back -back covers wherever we have, we have, uh, you know, we are sort of, you know, coating. Okay, back-to-back -back coating, right. So, we'll not be impacted that much. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. And, and so lastly, on the EOC, I mean, the concern is, you know, the margins might take a hit with uh, sharp rise in coffee prices. So anything you could, you know, comment on, how is the industry saying, are we, you know, uh, is the industry planning to increase the coffee prices and how is the demand scenario there? Um, so what we understand is, so, you know, from all the, from, uh, some of the brands have taken up some prices so that we are, uh, you know, it, the local market is evaluating that. Normally, in the, in the past, obviously, these prices will get passed down in some form or the other, depending on the either trade, consumer, or the, you know, uh, in, increase in the in the pack, in the packs. So that is something the local market will uh, will have to uh, will be is looking at. Right. And so, what would be your reading on this? You know, very sharp uh, uptrend in coffee prices. I mean, you did mention last time around that it was a result of, you know, very uh, speculative market, but. Uh, uh, do we do we expect it to you know correct at some point of time? So I think uh, yeah. So I I made this uh, comment I think uh, in the beginning of uh, the uh, uh, the call. Uh, one of course I mean uh, uh, there are two factors which led uh, to this increase. Uh, 
One is, of course, the, the, the drought that uh, kind of uh, people talk about, uh, talked about in the beginning of the year and uh, the impact it possibly could have on the uh, overall crop. That is more speculative in nature. Then, of course, there has been this uh, weather event, which is frost, which is taking place in, uh, in uh, Brazil. As I was mentioning earlier, uh, the loss of crop and the quantum uh, you know, uh, change in the total crop, which is expected to be harvest from, harvested from uh, Brazil, uh, seems to be widely varying, uh, widely uh, you know, fluctuating to uh, with you know who are you speak to? I mean, I'm talking about some of the uh, some of the big uh, trade houses that we normally do business with. So uh, the fact remains that uh, it is too early to be able to really put a number to the kind of losses that would have actually occurred. There is definitive loss which is uh, which is taking place because there is uh, enough documentary proof. Uh, photographic proof to uh, to be able to uh, understand that there is a massive amount of damage which has happened. But what is the exact uh, level of loss would be known a month, month and a half from now. And that definitely the market will factor in uh, based on, uh, you know, uh, based on based on how the consumption and how things are opening up uh, in, in, in the Western world as far as coffee consumption goes. So I think uh, uh, it is best, you know, we wait and watch for at least a month, month and a half before we draw any very specific uh, conclusions around uh, whether this is uh, uh, sustainable, uh, the price, price hike is sustainable or whether it, it could come down. I hope I've answered your question. Uh, all right. Yeah. So that was really helpful. Uh, so, sir, on EOC, I believe we sourced predominantly from Brazil and Colombia. So just wanted to understand, you know, if there is scope to, you know, supply from India and Vietnam and thereby trying to gain some adva advantage of uh, over our competitors there. Is, is there any scope? Like no, 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 no. See, the, the India, you know, for example, Viet, uh, Vietnam, see, we manufacture instant coffee. No, there is, there is a, that's not, an, that's an RNG play there. Instant coffee play is not the you know, U.S. instant coffee play. And they predominantly use, uh, you know, Arabica coffee, which is from, they source from Brazil. So India supplying, you know, it will not be a, you know, India okay. anyway produces smaller quantums of a, of Arabica, and secondly, the freight cost etc. will be they, it will be quite, you know, uncompetitive. Uh, it's, uh, it's uncompetitive. Got it. Got it. And sir, only last question, uh, if you may find it fit to answer, uh, are we planning to bid for? So one of our large competitors, I believe, is pla planning to sell uh, its plantation business. Uh, so are we planning to bid, uh, you know, uh, for that? Any, any, any. Uh, you know, we have no, pla we have no plans. Uh, no plans on uh, adding uh, more plantation, uh, is it? Uh, yeah, all right, all right. So thanks, thanks. Uh, uh, Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sudan Punjabi from V2 Wealth Brokers Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I just wanted to ask you uh, regarding the uh, Sonic brand. Um, how has the uh, uptake been? And uh, if you could probably just give us some color on uh, you know what are your future plans for the brand? Yeah. So uh, Sonic actually has been pretty pretty uh, successful. Uh, uh, and I think uh, so. What? We are hoping to do with Sonics, and again, uh, uh, obviously, this is marketed and sold on a D2C platform by Tata Consumer Products, our uh, parent company. But uh, the the entire produce actually comes from uh, Tata Coffee's garden. So we're intrinsically, uh, you know, uh, uh, connected with the entire entire uh, thing. So the uh, the idea was to actually uh, give limited edition. Uh, Coffees, which are uh, you know uh, produced only for that particular season, from very specific gardens or in a very specific manner of uh, uh, production or you know for, uh, of uh, how you how you manufacture it. So uh, this uh, this year, uh, in fact, the number of variants that we have been uh, which uh, are going to be sold has. Uh, increase substantially. So the idea was that there has been good 
uh, feedback and a, a good uptake. Uh, so we feel that this is something that we would be able to uh, substantially scale up. Uh, and especially uh, considering these are uh, speciality, semi, single estate, uh, limited edition copies. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, I just have one more uh, question. Uh, just wanted to an update, uh, you know, on the um, JV that we have at Starbucks and, you know, the... Uh, yeah, and, and basically, you know, the the, the uh, quantum or you know, any color on the, the tie-up and the beans that you have been uh, giving to Starbucks. So, oh, see, we, uh, JV is between Tata Consumer and uh, Starbucks, okay. But we are the sole and, uh, sole and uh, exclusive supplier of uh, Arabica beans. We have a roastery for them in Kushal Nagar. So uh, we recently, about last, last year, we expanded the roastery. So about 300 to 350 tons of uh, uh, of beans which, which it can, uh, the roastery can process. So, of course, currently, you know, for, uh, last, of course, because of pandemic, some of the stores were closed, but they have, they have, they have opened other, channel, other channels and, you know, I mean, all, all the delivery, uh, you know, uh, solutions, they have, uh, they, have, they have sort of, you know, opened up. And so, and the, and the, and the you know, tie-up has been, you know, extremely rewarding. Okay, wow, that's it. Thank you so much. Thank that's all for my end. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Falguni Datta from Jet Eight Securities Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, sir. I just have one question. If you could just provide uh, the growth potential uh, of profits in for each of your businesses, which is eight o'clock and the Vietnam Instant Coffee division over three year period. I'm not asking for a guidance, but just the profit growth potential that you see over three years for each of these two divisions. Oh, it's very difficult to answer. I'm, we are, uh, you know, sorry, we are not able to give any numbers in that sense. But obviously, as we have explained earlier, you know, two things. Eight o'clock, of course, uh, you know, uh, uh, they are trying to have, you know, strong pipeline of uh, of innovation. So that is the way. I mean, some of the new products pipeline is eight o'clock, and then they are trying to expand whatever the reach and potential there in the US. And uh, I swear, regarding Vietnam is concerned, as we have maybe mentioned that there are potential levers to expand the margin, that which is what we are working on. So beyond that, we are not able to give any, you know, growth percentage just for uh, the next three years and all that. Put, to put it differently, where do you see the company, uh, which segment do you see the company enabling growth uh, for the next three years? I mean, which segment would be, uh, let's say, the leader in, in, uh, in delivering growth for Tata Coffee over three years? Sure, let me, I will tell you. So on the plantation side, we are looking at diversification of crops. We have uh, we have planted avocado, so that is uh, in the next two three years. And as we have earlier talked said also uh, that we have we have uh, expanding the pepper pepper production. Uh, so that is roughly around now around thousand thousand uh, you know uh, thousand to thousand one hundred uh, tons over a period of time. That is that that we are potentially we are uh, looking at you know aggressive expansion. We have planted wines which will start you know yielding over the next couple of years. So on the plantation side, clearly diversification and pepper is one, uh, are the two levers which we are working on. And, and the next growth engine is, of course, instant coffee. We set up the Vietnam plant for FDC in 2019. It went into commercial production. And we have plans, you know, over a period of time, we have to look at how, how to grow that market. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Himanshu Nair from Yes Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good morning, uh, sir, and thanks for taking my question. Uh, first one, uh, you, you talked about uh, the margin levers that you have for the Vietnam instant coffee business, but coming to the India instant coffee business, I mean, uh, where are we currently in terms of profitability, and do you see uh, any uh, significant margin levers uh, in the India business? So it's like this, in India we have all the three, you know, Vietnam is only a free stride business, this is the premium end. India we have the spray, aglo and the free stride, uh, all the three are there. So that uh, in terms of margin expansion, we are, you know, uh, it's a question of the, the, of the, of the mix which we, are, uh, which we are doing, that, 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 that is the one first one, depending on, uh, again, we have, well, we have, a, you know, any kind of, you know, innovation, uh, you know, led products in all these uh, three, uh, all, especially on the spray and aglo. 
secondly on the tata copy grand also we have uh, if you if you, you know if you, we recall that tata copy grand is manufactured by us and sold uh, uh, to tata consumer which marks which uh, you know market fit so there also we have we have found good traction so these are the you know kind of uh, broadly two levers apart from the cost optimization levers which we are always you know trying to work on understood sir and uh, talking specifically about this quarter i understand that there are margin risk going forward for 8 o'clock but specific to this quarter we have seen a decline in top line uh, but uh, you talked about cost controls and a better realization so just from this quarter's perspective have we been able to maintain our margins on 8 o'clock yeah 8 o'clock you see what is happening there is the you know last year the volumes were higher because of fancy filling and all that so this time it has gone normalized but having said that they are also having some headwinds in terms of the of the of the green coffee of the green cost so that uh, so the so that is there to the detection there is some but so that is a lag effect which will be there till they you know they find some solutions around uh, how the how the you know flow through on the pricing will happen no no i was talking about this the quarter gone by sir so whether we have seen any whether we been able to maintain our margins because as of now that would not have hit us right No, no. Eight o'clock. There has been some dip in margin compared to the previous quarter, previous year's quarter. That's I, which we explained, you know, due to the you know uh, higher, uh, you know, uh, kind of you know uh, on the overall cost. Understood. And just my final question would be on the uh, plantations business, specifically related to tea. Could you give some color on the uh, growth and profitability out there, given the current uh, pricing environment? Yeah, yeah, good yeah. question. No, no. T, T. For example, the last year was a good year for T. We had a good, uh, you know, uh, operating performance. We did led largely by higher prices. The quarter one also, we have found that higher uh, the prices uh, holding on. Though we are now seeing a, some kind of a, you know, uh, uh, you know, those uh, higher level, levels of prices are coming off in this quarter. But having said that, uh, we have put in additional measures. A new, a new strategy has been put in place in respect of turnaround. Uh, turnaround. We are also trying to, you know, synergize with our, uh, with our, with our the associate company, Kanan Devan in Munnar. So that way, we are seeing, you know, on the T side, we are investing. We are also investing behind the uh, factory renovations and uh, uh, to improve the quality of the of, of T. With all that, uh, we are we are looking for a, you know, uh, fairly decent performance in T going forward. Understood, sir. That's all from me, sir. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. A reminder to the participants: anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star and one. The next question is in the line of Anirudh Joshi. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, sir, just one important question: uh, How much is Brazil as percent of total global coffee production? and uh, uh means uh, if we take a ballpark estimate let's say 50% of the production is lost for this year then uh, means then means obviously it is very difficult to do such correlation but roughly what will be the impact on the coffee prices globally and generally such kind of uh, large impact have we seen in previous one or two decades and uh if you can share from your experience what is generally the impact on coffee prices and for how long the uh, impact remains yes yeah, so you you are the most difficult and and uh, anirudh uh, for if something like a 50% uh, you know crop is disappearing i mean i think uh, coffee would be uh, uh, you know worth of uh, price in gold but anyway jokes aside uh, frankly uh, one of course we must understand uh, uh arabica production is what has been impacted in this particular weather event which is uh typically uh, brazil produces close to 70% Ladies and gentlemen, the line for the speaker seems to have got disconnected. Please stay connected while we reconnect the speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the conference operator. Please note we have lost the line for the management. Please stay connected while we try to reconnect them.
ladies and gentlemen thank you for patiently holding we now have the line for the speaker reconnected over to you sir so uh, thanks uh, anurag i was just saying that uh, the impact which is actually taking place has uh, been purely on the arabica crop uh, Uh, Brazil typically produces anything between 50 to 70 percent of the world's arabica production. So, uh, uh, whatever uh, the 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 markets would uh, move up and down would be around the arabica production alone. Uh, and again, uh, uh, if I remember the the rest of the uh, question, I think it was around uh, what the impact could be on uh, the uh, overall crop. Is, uh, is okay. that globally? Is that something global? Yeah. So that's 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 uh, something which uh, we will really need to uh, uh, wait and watch. As I mentioned earlier, again, if the the entire uh, you know uh, numbers were to come. Uh, to a, a level say of uh, eight or nine million bags, if, which is what some of the people have actually uh, spoken about, then the impact of coffee prices increased uh, would be there uh, persisting for the next year too. Primarily because uh, the frost typically would have not just damaged if such a large uh, you know impact is there, could have not just damaged the crop but also the Uh, coffee bushes in itself. Uh, the last time something like this happened uh, was some in in the in the uh, early 90s, and uh, that led to a kind of a boom in coffee prices for uh, for four or five six years actually. So uh, uh, again, I must clarify. I must caution the actual loss of crop. the actual area that has been uh, lost uh, due to frost the severity of the frost and the fact that uh, some people talk about another cold front being there we need to wait and watch for the next month month and a half at least two months to understand this before we pass any kind of uh, you know uh, judgment in terms of how coffee prices are going to be okay okay so that is uh, very helpful just last question uh, now there is some increase in raw material cost obviously we have some inventory and forward costs but uh, have we started raising uh, additional co- prices to our uh, customers too and if any contact so on the instant coffee say this contract as we explained it depends on the coffee prices gets you know constantly repriced New contracts or more factoring into the new prices and all that. That's how it it will operate. And typically, we have been running uh, the plants with uh, orders, so that you know, it's there is no you know nothing which is lying there which you know uh, can be repriced or or you know uh, there isn't a variance in the price which is possible. Okay, so uh, logically, we can assume that uh, there will not be any material impact on the margins. Uh, Or FI twenty two, or is it again too early to comment? To say it, because see, you know, there are you know coffee prices are one. It will of course uh, you know since we get contracts, we we also price it based on prices and all that. But there are also other other indications. So you would have read about the freight costs and container issues and all that. That is one. Then tin tin prices are high. We we do lot of you know aglo SKUs for Africa. So those are all other things which we are you know which we are still you know kind of navigating. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. This question is kind of Pranav Lala from Augmenta Research. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Good morning. So I had a question on the plantation side. uh currently 15 to 18% of your top line comes from plantations how do you expect this to change in the this mix to change in the future so two or three reasons one of course is with the crop okay mm-hmm. coffee you know the depending on the crop that and uh, that will be one factor secondly as mm-hmm. i explained pepper we are uh, you know expecting growth in pepper production over the over uh, ne- next few years we have planted additional wines 
so all that we are to do so the, these two are the on the crop side then the diversification which will happen you know as we have, we have already planted avocados and all so that those are all you know getting into commercialization will take a couple of years so the third one and fourthly of course largely will also depend on the prices and fifth level is also the bot coffee which we are uh, you know we do quite around 3 to 4000 tons of bot coffee that also will be a play a believer uh, going forward okay okay and, uh, how much of this plantation revenue comes purely from uh, coffee because i understand there's a uh, amount of pepper and tea included in this so how much of the top line will be purely from coffee plantations yeah so coffee alone uh, roughly around 30% okay okay 13 you said or what 30 oh 30 okay okay all right thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen that is the last question i now hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments uh um, thank you everyone uh, for having joined us for this uh, call uh, we hope to catch up with you all again uh, uh, at the end of this quarter to uh, quarter to comments thank you thank you very much thank you ladies and gentlemen on behalf of icici securities that concludes this conference call we thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines thank you